Okay, so in this episode, we're going to make a do-it-yourself air dryer for the air compressor here. This air compressor I've had for a couple years, it does have a water trap built into it here, and it does work to some extent, but it's definitely not sufficient enough to provide dry air out to the end of the uh, airline when you are using it for extended long periods of time with like a normal sander or air blow gun or whatever, you still do see um, water coming out the end. So I probably should have made one of these ages ago before I started the, uh, the build of the tunner, but um, anyway, I've got a bit of downtime now. So obviously you want nice dry air, it's gonna help uh, make your air tools last longer. You're not gonna have water going through your air tools. And then obviously when you're spray painting primers and paint, you're not gonna have water. Uh, in the um, primer and paint as well. Obviously water is just not ideal when you're spray painting. Now there is a few videos on YouTube on how to make these things and apparently they work really well. Now it isn't my idea obviously, but most of the videos I did watch are all American. So I thought I'd just make this video. So this is gonna be an Australian version of it and how I'm gonna do it. All these parts I picked up from Reese Plumbing. Now Reese Plumbing is Australian wide. So if you don't have a Reese Plumbing, you could probably just go to your local plumbing supply store. I did go to Bunnings to try and get all this stuff, but they didn't have everything I needed. They do have the copper tubing and some of the fittings, but yeah, they didn't have a whole lot. So I just recommend go to your local plumbing supply store. Now the cost for all the parts to do the job ended up being around $400 to $450 approximately. That's including all your copper tubing, all your fittings, your silver solder, your flux, yeah, pretty much everything to do the job. And I'll put all the parts required in the show notes. So click on the show notes and yeah, everything that you'll need for the job will be in there. Okay, so how this thing works is as your air compressor compresses the air, it's gonna heat it up. So you're gonna have hot air coming out of the outlet of your compressor and then go into the inlet of your air dryer. As the hot air comes into the air dryer, it's gonna flow through this copper tubing. As it flows through, it's gonna cool down, creating condensation. So you're gonna have water droplets start to build up and due to gravity, the water droplets are gonna to fall to the bottom of the tubing and get trapped in the bottom section here. And then the air is just gonna to continue to flow through these copper tubing sections. And then you've got the ball valves at the bottom that you can open up to drain the water off. So yeah, as it goes through each section, you're gonna have less and less uh, water collecting at each ball valve. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the theory anyway. Now the copper tubing I'm using is three quarter copper tubing. Now some of the videos I did watch, some guys used inch tubing, some guys used three quarter. I just use three quarter. Now bear in mind, if you wanna go inch, it is gonna cost a bit more, but I guess with inch, it's gonna have more surface area. So it's probably gonna cool it a little bit better because you got more surface area of the copper tubing. Now you could probably make these longer uh, by using the three quarter. So that's gonna give you more surface area if you make the tubing longer, but uh, it just depends on where you're gonna mount them. So 1.5 meters is the length I'm using. So that gives me plenty of room to mount it up on the wall. So I've got seven lengths at um, 1.5 meters. So seven lengths. And then I've got a bit left over for cutting up for the little sections in between here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just cut up all the little sections in between the uh, fittings here. And I'm just gonna use one of these tube cutters. This is just out of a brake flaring tool kit. So yeah, this uh, is gonna work, no worries at all. Okay, so that is all the little joiner sections all cut up and I've got them all sitting in there. So these little sections here, I cut them at 55 mil and then these sections here, I cut them at 60 mil. So it's all pretty much ready to start cleaning up and silver soldering. Now, 
I don't want to get too much heat in these ball valves. There's seals in there, so you want to try and yeah, not get much heat in there. So what I'll do is I'll unscrew them ball valves from that fitting. I'll solder this section to that fitting there, and then once it cools, then I can screw that back on, tighten it up on this fitting, and then you'll be able to move the ball valve to get them all lined up, and then you can then solder into, well, this section into there then, and then they'll be all nice and level. I'm going to be using silver solder and some easy flow flux paste. So I just got them from Reese Plumbing as well. So yeah, I'll start soldering these sections up first. Okay, so after doing a few little practice runs off screen, it's turned into a bit of a show, but I've figured it out after a few trips to Bunnings and Reese Plumbing later, finally figured it out. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes here. But the guy from Reese Plumbing gave me this silver solder to use, and this stuff has got a really high melting point. So I'm pretty sure that there's a couple different types of silver solder. You got hard and soft, and the stuff that he's given me is hard, I'm pretty sure. And I was heating this, um, the copper up and the brass with the uh, map gas, and it was just absolutely cooking the shit out of it, and this stuff just would not melt into it at all. So after doing a little bit more research, I've found that most guys just use like a uh, plumber's solder. So the stuff that I got here, I ended up going to Bunnings and getting this stuff, which is a 50-50 solder, which has got lead and tin in it, I'm pretty sure. And um, so I got this stuff, started heating this up again and it would just yeah melt really really easy you don't have to put a lot of heat into it and it melts pretty easily but i was using this flux paste that a guy from reese plumbing gave me i thought it was just going to be the same flux paste but um but yeah after doing a little bit more research um that you cannot use with the solder so it was just not sticking at all it just kept running off with that flux paste so i had to do another trip to bunnings and I figured out that you need this stuff here, which is a baker's flux paste. So yeah, this stuff works with the solder. And uh, yeah, since using both of them, it just melts and flows and sticks really, really easily now. So yeah, key takeaways is don't use hard silver solder and use the right flux paste for the solder here. So I'll continue on and uh, show you how I uh, soldered them up. Okay, so that is one end all soldered up. So I started doing this section here and then I've done the other side and there was actually quite a fair bit of heat getting into this ball valve. So what I decided to do is just leave all them out and then just solder all them up and then let that cool. And then because this one's already soldered up, all I gotta do is put that in there, give it one quick solder and that's gonna minimize the amount of heat getting back into it. And then also what you can do is just put a wet rag 
around the uh, ball valve as well, and that's gonna help keep it cool as well. So yeah, it's actually quite easy to solder. What I found is you just heat the bottom up with the torch, so yeah, you heat up around this section here, and then you just dab in the solder, and you'll see it flow. Even if you dab it down the bottom, you'll still see it flow around the whole join. It's actually quite satisfying to watch. And then, yeah, I just found that you just give it a dab down the bottom, give it a dab on each side, and then one at the top, and it'll just flow all the way around the join. Okay, so she's all together. I just used these clamps here to screw to this timber here. And I've spaced out the timber so it'll mount up on the wall in between these uh, ribs here. And I've just blocked up the outlet side. So I've just got a bit of hose with some hose clamps there. And then I've got a bolt in there. So that's all blocked off. And then down this end, that's attached to the compressor. Um, so it's got pressure in there now. I started out with 50 PSI and then I dialed it up to 100 PSI. So she's currently holding 100 PSI, so I can't hear any leaks. So she's... So yeah, all the ball valves are holding as well. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'll probably get some soapy water, put it in a spray bottle and then spray over the, all the joins and just make sure I see no, um, no bubbles form um, from any air leaks. But I think it's pretty good, I can't hear anything. So yeah, the next thing after that will be to mount it up on the wall and then she's pretty much done and I can test it out. Okay, so that is all mounted and connected up. So I ran the compressor about eight cycles. There was a little bit of water that got caught or trapped in this first one, but because it goes through this water separator first, I think majority of it is getting picked up by that. But it isn't, it doesn't seem like a very humid day or anything. It seems to be pretty dry, the air today. So probably not really gonna know how well it works until it gets to a bit more humid. Um, but for the most part, the air did seem nice and dry coming out the air hose when I was um, using it. So I think that's gonna be a uh, nice addition anyway. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. I've been meaning to make one of them air dryers for quite some time now, so I'm glad I had a bit of downtime to be able to make it. So once again, it was about 450 bucks to make, so if you do want to make one yourself, I'll put a list of all the parts that are required in the show notes below. So if you like what I do, you want to help support the channel, head over to the Shanky Garage merch store, so I'll put a link in the show notes below also. And if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on Shanky Garage. Cheers.